Hello friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and in today's video I am going to put together two spreads using one stamp set from Feed Your Craft. So the stamp set I'm using today is called Good Stuff and this was one of the newer stamps that came out for the seventh birthday celebration this month. I actually have three stories that I'm going to use this one set on in order to create but one of them is, is for my niece so that one I'm going to work on at a different point in time. Instead, I am just working on two today, a story for my son and a story for my daughter. So what I'm going to do is get you on fast forward. I'm going to put together both of these spreads and then once everything is done, we'll slow down in order to close out for today. So let's go ahead and get started. To get started with my projects for today, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get everything stamped that I want to use for both of my spreads. So some of the tools that I'm going to pull out to use are my acrylic stamp blocks, I've got my different inks that I want to use, and then I also have this Sizzix Stamper Secret Weapon, which is just a foam mat that is awesome for stamping. This one is not sold by Sizzix anymore. I believe you can still find the Stamper Secret Weapon in other stores but there are tons of products that essentially do the same thing that are both um, like stamping related but you could also use things like a mouse pad or um, or like a coaster anything that's got a little bit of give to it that allows your stamp to press into the paper for a better impression um, so that's what I'm using here for my various stamping things on today's page. For the first spread, I went ahead and I took a six by four piece of textured white cardstock and I cut it down into six two by two squares. Then I'm going to stamp the same sentiments on all six of them. So I've got good stuff here now, uh, which is my main title for this page. And then I'm also pulling a stamp set that says, um, this is everything that I'm going to stamp underneath the good stuff. This one I'm doing in my tomato, I think it's tomato soup is the name of the ink. It's a red ink from Paper Person. Uh, the black I'm using is my scrapbook.com premium black dye ink. And then I'm also going to pull over my green, which is avocado. No, guacamole. I think it's guacamole. Well, we'll pull that over here in just a second and I'm going to stamp happiness found here or happiness here. I can't remember if it's happiness found here or happiness here. Guacamole is the name of the ink pad there and it's happiness found. That's what it says. So I'm going to stamp that at the top of the good stuff title. So you can see that I've created this stacked sentiment um, little tiny card that I'm going to use interspersed with photos for the spread about Jonah. Then I went ahead and I stamped out a whole bunch of these, um, they're like labels where there's a section at the top to add in your title, there's a section in the middle to add in your journaling, and then there's a section at the bottom to put your date stamping. So I stamped out Oh, gosh, I think eight, nine, ten. I think I did about 15 of them, maybe more than that, maybe less. It's something around there because I know I want to use eight of them on the spread for Izzy and I want to use three of them on the spread for Jonah. But I always make sure I stamp out a couple extras just in case I mess up my journaling or I don't stamp things right um, so that I've got backups if I need them. For the spread about Jonah, I'm going to use that same tomato soup red as my title piece, just the header, which is a filled in stamp that's included with the stamp set. And then for the spread about Isabella, I'm using the paper person coastal ink, which is a little bit bluer. It's kind of a bluish tealish color um, that I thought went well with the t-shirt that she's wearing. So that's what made me decide to use that ink. And the red is perfect with like the orangey red of Jonah's shirt. So I love the way that those ones looked. One of the things I will mention about the paper person inks, if you've never used them before, is they are a dye ink. So the longer they sit, the more they um, like even out the color evens out over time. So you'll see that as the spread goes on, the color looks a lot more even and a lot more um, 
like solid than it did when I very first stamped it, especially since I'm using a textured cardstock. So it does take a little bit of time to get into all of those crevices. So then I grabbed over the Happiness Found sentiment once again, stamped that in the black ink in all of the header sections because I'm going to use the same title for both spreads. And then I'm just going to grab a couple of extra sentiments and stamp sets here off of the set to create some embellishments or some clusters on the photos as I'm working on these pages. So I did three of those little super cute little um clouds that say pure joy I also did the banner that says smile and then the it's like a what I want to say it's like a speech bubble that says I think totally awesome is maybe what it says totally amazing that's what it says so then I took all of that to the side and went and fussy cut it out while watching a tv show that's like one of my favorite things to do is to fussy cut and um, watch a show at the same time and then I'm coming back here to get everything arranged and my journaling done. So I picked three of my favorite ones here with the red color at the top. Those are going to go at the base of this page for Jonah. So it's like he's almost sitting on top of them. And I really, really love the orientation of the photo with those um, journaling sections at the bottom. And then on the left side is where I'm going to pair my stamped sentiments with my photos. However, I'm, I don't really like it. It's like too busy. There's too much happening. Um, so what I did is I chose the very best one that I'm going to use as my title piece. I went back into my stash and pulled out all of my circle chipboard which I have my chipboard pieces organized by shape once I'm done using them in their specific kits that they originally came in. So I'm going to pick out five of them. I actually pick out six and then later we'll decide what five I like best. I've got one that says summer love, one that's got some blue wave lines. I've got that lighter blue that says yes, it's actually cork, a painted cork piece. And then I've got um, the I've got three of those black ones, one that has a house, one that's got a geotag, and one that's got an ampersand. So I will put the house one back here in just a second and, and keep the other two. So then I'm going to lay out my photos along with the title piece that says good stuff there. So now it's more like a title and less like a bunch of busy words. And then I'm going to stick these chipboard pieces in the opposite squares, but they need something to go on top of. So I will put all of this to the side, grab out an additional piece of cardstock here. So we're going to do this again. And then I will find a stamp that says, um, gosh, what does it say? Uh, happy, something happy, I believe. Hold on, we'll figure it out here once I actually stamp it. Um, so I'm going to stamp this on an angle. So very happy, I think is what it says something along those lines. Anyway, I'm going to stamp it on an angle with a lighter gray color. This is the Orca gray from Paper Person. I figure since I'm already, you know, knee deep into the Paper Person inks with these two spreads that I might as well just stick it out and use the gray from the same kit. I actually really like this gray. It's, um, it's darker. It's dark enough where you can see it, but it's not too black where it still blends into the background if you need it to. One of the things I like about stamping on an angle, especially with something like this, is when you get it cut down and into the place where it's going to go, it's something about it makes it more subtle, um, where your eye is not necessarily as drawn to it. It looks more like a background and less like a title, if that makes sense. So I have that done. I'm going to trim this down into six of the two by twos. So one of them I won't necessarily need. I only need five of them. And then I have an extra strip that I set to the side because the cardstock was a bit bigger than I needed. And it's funny because I'll actually end up using that strip here on the other spread. So everything works out. It's like totally was meant to happen. Serendipitous for sure. So here's where you can see how the um, happy stamp there is it blends a little bit more like it's it's. Um, it's not as in your face as as the titles were because they're filled in and it looks more like a background. So we'll go ahead and we'll stick down all of the chipboard pieces onto the squares. 
And then I'm also going to add my journaling into these little journaling sections. I'm using a slick writer pen from scrapbook.com just because I like the weight of that pen. Um, and it also dries really quickly so I don't have to worry about smearing it. It's one of my favorite things about those pens. And then I will just use some adhesive to add those to the bottom of the photo and permanently adhere them down. So three of them fit on here quite nicely. And then I still have had room on the edge there for hole punching, which I did a lot earlier. Um, I usually like to hole punch my photos first if they're going to go outside of a page protector. That way I don't have to worry about anything interfering with them. I went ahead, stuck down all those chipboard pieces, and now this spread is complete. I'm going to put all of it to the side and we'll pull over the second spread here. The thing that I love about these two is that it's using the same stamp set. It's just... Um, slightly different, you know, different configurations. And I love the idea of taking one stamp set and seeing how you can use it to tell different stories. So this this one, the uh, Good Stuff stamp from Futurecraft is definitely one that is pretty versatile for everyday stories like that. So I've got my traveler's notebook. This one is from Studio Calico, and I'm just looking for a page that I can go ahead and stick my photo down onto. I like the idea of having grid on the opposite side just to help me put everything down straight. So far, nothing is like super appealing. And then I find this blue, which just happens to be almost the same blue as Izzy's shirt. And the reason that's important is because I printed this photo slightly smaller than the page. So it's more like four inches uh, by 8.25. So um, it might, yeah, I think it's about four inches. It might be slightly bigger than that even, but it's pretty much four inches. So I knew that there was going to be a good chance that you would see the background paper on the edges of the photo. So I loved that this one blended so well with the photo that we took. I grabbed three of those sentiments that I had stamped and cut out. So I've got one of those clouds, I've got the smile banner, and I've got the totally amazing um, like speech bubble there. I think it's a speech bubble. And I put that at the top right corner of my photo. So that's just going to be a light embellishing on my photo. I will add some double-sided adhesive and then stick this directly into the page, covering up the so much goodness sentiment there. Um, I like, you know, that sentiment's fine, but I'm not... I don't, I'm not super keen on using the papers in these Studio Calico books that have actual sentiments on them. I'm definitely more drawn to the patterns than the sentiments. And then for the opposite side, I had originally planned to use eight of these um, journaling pieces. So I was going to use four and four, but it turns out that really it's taller um, than I thought it was. So I can fit five, but then also it's not quite wide enough. So if I were to put, you know, five by five, two columns of five, um, I'm pretty sure that you would have a hard time closing it. So instead, what I'm going to do is use five of them instead of 10. I thought that it would be cool to stagger them and then to also use that strip of stamped pattern paper that we made earlier on the inside edge as sort of a separator in between the photo and my journaling bits. And then because there is this empty space from staggering the um, journaling pieces, I thought it would be fun to go back into the stamp set and pull out a couple of the smaller ones to add into those smaller spaces. So that is what I'm going to do. Once I have this all figured out, you know, which ones I want to use where, I will go ahead and start adhering everything down. So I'm going to start with this strip right here, which I don't even know how big that is. It's just a random size, but it seemed to work out really nicely. So that I'm going to go ahead and adhere down onto the inside edge there, keeping enough distance so that when I close the album or the book, it doesn't cause any problems. So there's like a tiny bit of space in between the pattern paper and the spine. And then I will also go ahead and adhere down all of these um, sections for journaling. I will take this to the side a little bit later to go ahead and fill out my journaling. Um, sometimes it's easier for me to just sit down at my desk and give a little bit of thought into what I want to say. But essentially, I'm going to tell the story of the kids or specifically Izzy 
running through the sprinklers one sunny afternoon and um, then proceeding to play in the mud and make mud pies and mud soup and caked herself in mud and then came over to me like this and we snapped a picture and it was she had a good time uh, Jonah was pretty much the same he was covered in mud too but um, I have this picture of Izzy that I super love so she's the one who this story gets to be about this time for the stamp sentiments I decided to bring back over my guacamole green ink from paper person since there's a lot of green on the page to the left i didn't really want to bring in any new colors because at this point i've got the gray i've got the tealish color um and then there's a lot of that green in the outside so i figured just keeping to those three colors that it would make this spread go together a lot better i didn't want anything to be too stark in contrast to the colors that were already included here so i did the floral that says oh so lovely i did the current favorite which is just you know a uh, stamp just a sentiment there's no like design to it I've got love this that's got a little arrow on there there is a floral with a stem on it and I'm going to stamp three of those on there just to create a little cluster and then for the bottom I'm going to use one of these longer stamps but what I'm going to do is ink up part of it and stamp that down first so that we've got I can basically stack the sentiment clean it off really good and then I'm going to ink up the opposite side of the stamp and then do the same thing it's not perfect uh, when you see close-up images later it's not perfect but it's it's good enough for me i i don't really mind if it slipped up a little bit so whatever so we'll take this to the side fill out journaling and now we are back and the last thing i need to do is add some date stamping into these boxes now i'm going to add the same date into all of them because it's all on the same date and that doesn't really bother me i just wanted them to be filled out so for these, I'm just putting in the day and the month. I am partially inking my date roller stamp for the same reason. Uh, plus that's all that will fit into these labels. I'm gonna do the same thing for this page about Jonah and then that is going to do it. All right, friends, that completes both of my spreads using the Good Stuff stamp from Featurecraft. I am super happy with both of these spreads. So we've got the Travelers in a Book spread for Isabella with just a story about a day that she was particularly happy and the events of that particular day. And then I've also got the story of Jonah just playing in the dirt and having a great time with it. I'm really happy that I decided to go ahead and stamp out a different background for the majority of these squares. It just was a little bit too busy with all of the, um, all of the squares having the same title in it. I feel like this is a lot more pleasing to the eye. And, um, also, it helped me to use up some of my circle chipboard pieces, so that's a win in my book as well. I hope that you enjoyed seeing both of these stories come together, and if you did, I would love a thumbs up on this video down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see all of the future content I have coming your way. And um, until next time, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next video. <laughs> Bye, friends.